a female police officer who was the aide de to former Kogi state governor, Yaya Belo, has been arrested and detained by the Nigeria police force. The ADC was arrested alongside other police officers attached to the embattled former governor. Recall that the Inspector General of Police, Ulukayo de Egbetokun, had on Thursday night directed the immediate withdrawal of all officers attached to Belo. The order for the withdrawal, which was contained in a police wireless message, followed the disappearance of Belo from his Abuja home after the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, besieged the residents. The anti-graft agency had also declared Belo wanted, urging Nigerians with useful information about his whereabouts to report to the nearest police station. Meanwhile, hundreds of human rights activists on Saturday hit the streets of Lagos to condemn what they described as the economic and Financial Crimes Commission's anti-democratic approaches to issues of law enforcement as well as unjust application of state power by the federal government. According to them, from the facts and documents obtained on the matter, the EFCC never sent a letter of invitation to ex-Governor Belo. As such, the issue of evading arrest does not therefore exist. They should allow the judgment from Kogi High Court to be obeyed first and foremost before appeal is heard. And if the appeal vacates the initial judgment, we know that uh, that judgment has been vacated. But they should know that what is good for the girls is also good for the gander. The man who understand uh, 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 the rule of law had gone to court, uh, got in an injunction, restraining the FCC or other uh, manticolors agency from arresting or intimidating him. Even the EFCC that is going up and down, trying to use ultraviolet means to get him arrested, protested, appeal, I mean, sorry, appealed such ruling, and even it is the, 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 the thing is coming out, it's, it's going to be hard on Monday. So why can't we wait for that before you started? You started coming to say, okay, we are going to declare, you declared him one time, you said you are going to be the military. I mean, that's no more, that's more, that's no more uh, fighting corruption. Joining us tonight is the chairman, Center for Anti-Corruption and Open Leadership, Debo Adeniro. We also have a journalist and PDP chieftain, Larry Olayinka, and the chief operating officer, People's Daily Newspaper, Dr. Amid Bello, to discuss this. Let me start with... Uh, let me start with Dr. Amir. Larry Alayenka, you have to pardon me, you know, there must be a degree of solidarity amongst journalists. You, on this occasion, I know you have a rich journalism reputation, but uh, you have been attached to a political party. So <laughs> let me start with somebody who is supposedly uh, unbiased now. Dr. Amir, let's go. What will be your, what will be your take of, of this melodrama? that is defining a uh, uh, criminal justice system, especially as it was played out melodramatically uh, in Abuja a couple of days ago. Uh, what would be your re reaction? Dr. Abid. Thank you very much uh, for having me on, on your program once again. Pleasure, uh, my pleasure once again to have you again. Yes, yes. The experience that we're having currently over the allegations of uh, money laundering by the former state governor, uh, Alaji Ayabendo, uh, is once again uh, one of the cases of uh, that, that, that challenges the, the jurisprudence uh, of Nigeria because uh, as we see it play out, uh, uh, why in a catch-22 uh, situation because uh, both the, the EFCC and the accused person are 
uh, claiming to be fighting in the interest of justice and fairness. Uh, but uh, what I understand is that uh, the judiciary has to has to uh, take a position to guide uh, to the day to add up to or to strengthen the jurisprudence on matters of corruption, whether of uh, you know uh, persons who have immunity or persons who don't have immunity. You know, uh, I, from my understanding, uh, it does appear that uh, the corruption uh, is not uh, uh, anything good for society, uh, and the politicians have a way of uh, uh, you know trying to escape uh, justice, uh, especially when matters of corruption are involved. Are involved. Okay, uh, let, in let, let me go to your colleague. Let, let, yes. let me let me go to your colleague for his opening salvo too. Uh, okay. Uh, Larry, what would be your opening yeah. salvo to this uh, still ongoing issue? Actually, still developing issue and developing in the in, in the direction of ugliness. Because as we speak, the suspect is yet to to be arrested. What would be your take? Uh, what? What, are, what we are witnessing presently is, is also is a pointer to what some of us have been saying in the last 10 years. Some of us have been have relented to, to, to complain about the activities and the operations of EFCC in the last 10 years. The records of my position, my opinion are there. What we are seeing now is just, it's just a continuation. Somebody like my, 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 myself, I thought that with the removal of Magu, AFC will begin to function in accordance with the law. But unfortunately, we are not seeing that now. On on this on this issue in question, before 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 former Governor Yabelo left office, he went to court to say in it could be cool, it could be an assumption. The court of Nigeria or anywhere in the world is there for people to go to seek protection. He went to court and said, oh, with the way these people are, are functioning and acting, they are likely to persecute me. He presented facts and evidences. And the court gave an interim order on February 9 this year. The court gave an interim order. To my mind, I'm not a lawyer, but I also understand law to some extent. The moment the court make, gave, give an order or make a ruling, either rightly or wrongly, that ruling must be, that order must be obeyed. Now, EFC felt aggrieved by that order. EFC went to a court and filed an appeal against that order. EFC filed an appeal. At the moment you have filed an appeal, it means that you have agreed that the order, at least to some point, has to be obeyed. And EFCC on March 26 this year went to the court of appeal seeking a stay of execution of that order. The Court of Appeal refused to grant that stay of execution. The moment that is done, I believe that EFCC, the hands ought to have been tied. No, no. EFCC ought to, ought, ought to have focused on that Court of Appeal no, no, and went to Court of Appeal to back it, that order before taking no, any no, 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 no. Yes. No reasonable person will fault the integrity of your argument, especially as it relates to the ineluctability of how court orders must be respected. In any society at all, court orders must inevitably, ineluctably be respected. And I fully agree that with you, on that with you. However, I am still sitting there now thinking in any society when a prima facie or when prima facie law enforcement officers tell you they want to arrest you, what a law abiding citizen should do is to yield to them and when yeah. you, when you then contact your lawyer after the arrest you will then tell your lawyer to help you 
activate the enforcement of the injunction that you have already gotten from the court. So I'm sitting here now thinking, oh, if I, I, if I, I fully I, agree with I you. Can I give you an information? What's that, please? Can I give you an information? Go ahead, go ahead. Can you, can you as a journalist do one thing for us tomorrow if you cannot do it today? Ask EFCC whether or not Yaya Bello was at what any time invited. As far as I know, former Governor Yaya Bello has not been invited by the EFCC. So on what basis are they, are they, are they what are they basing all this, all this yeah. shenanigans on? Larry. He has not been invited by the EFCC. And Larry, now we know. Larry Alayenka, Larry Alayenka, nobody, is faulting, yes. nobody is faulting the integrity of your logic. And as beautiful as your logic, you know, the first one you made is that in a rule of law respecting society, all agencies of state must respect the rule of law. And the law is yeah. what the court says it is. In so much as there was a prima facie injunction saying that the Yabere should not be arrested, EFCC ought not to it ought not to have sent operatives to go and arrest him. I agreed. And I'm, I, I'm coming, I, sir. I, I, I'm coming. Let me land. Let me, okay. let me land. I want to ask you a question. Number two okay. is that you said there was no power invitation. EFCC had not Subsequent to the attempted arrest, the foiled arrest, EFCC had not say, uh, countered that. They have not been said that. Now, that's another logic in favor of Yaya Bello. But I'm putting it to you. But I'm putting it to you that Yaya Bello too was under a duty that every citizen owes for the supremacy of law in any rule of law respecting society that when, when officers of the law come to you, even when you know that you have a prima facie court, court uh, 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 credit judgment in favor of you, you must still follow them and then tell your lawyers to activate your immediate release as a result of the contravention of the officer. Are you excusing away the fact that the conduct of Yaya Bello too was in every material particular criminal for not yielding to the officers of the law? Yielding to officers of the law in one regard. You will yield to people who have come to you to say, okay, there is an invitation, report to our office, or so, so they, that, is, that, is, that is the standard practice. I okay, with let, let me go to your colleague. Let me get your wrote, even as a governor, when he still had immunity, they wrote a letter to him, inviting him. And he responded to them that, oh, okay, I will be leaving office on, on, on October 15. By October 16, 1, 1, 1 p.m., I will come to your office. The question is, do you want the ability to, begin to, to also begin to function okay. on air let, 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 me go, let me go to your colleague. I, I, I'll, be back, I'll be back to you. I'll be back to you. Uh, Dr. Amit. Yes, please. Uh, your colleague's argument is standing on good, good logic, especially as law respecting agencies ought to operate in a rule of law respecting society. Ordinarily, some measures of decency and etiquette of law enforcement ought to have been complied with. Letter of invitation, you have declared the man wanted now without any prior letter of invitation, just because. Uh, and also the fact that there was a substantive injunction protecting him. But having said that, what would be your take on the resistance of arrest by Yaya Belutu? Dr. Amit? Yeah, uh, opinion on this matter is a little bit divided. It's a little bit uh, divided. Can you hear me? Well, we, we, we can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Yes, yes. Opinion is divided in the sense that uh, there are sentiments that uh, the EFCC uh, is uh, usurping the, uh, its mandate to arrest uh, former Governor Yabelo when there is uh, 
you know, a court order, you know, uh, asking them not to do that. The other side of uh, the opinion also, you know, claims that uh, the former governor is trying to escape justice. Uh, they, they, according to this uh, sentiment, it is expected that nobody is above the law. Uh, as a law-abiding citizen, once you are accused on a, for an offense and you feel you are not guilty, you can uh, make yourself available for, for questioning and then uh, provide your evidence, uh, especially if you feel very strongly that uh, you are innocent of the accusation. Uh, there are legal processes that, that can uh, set you free. Just make yourself available. Nobody is going to uh, unduly uh, you know, uh, keep anybody without uh, you know, observing the, the, the rule of law. Uh, but the attempt to run away from justice uh, to an extent uh, is also uh, not uh, uh, perceived to be good enough attempt, uh, in a way. Attempt to uh, while, run away, uh, you know, attempt to run away or, Dr. Amin, attempt to uh, run away or, yes. as we speak now, is in every mm. material particular a prima facie fugitive from the law. Until, mm. until it goes to a police station, or the nearest EFCC office to him and, 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 and he submits himself. He is, as we speak now, more so that he has been officially declared, I want to believe that even the methodology of declaring him wanted was against the law. Because what some of us over the years that we've been, we've been practicing journalism and with the part-time law I did at Westminster, Westminster University, London, the methodology through which that declaration, that wanted declaration was made, in, is in itself very suspect. But you know what? As we speak, it's a fug fugitive from the law. How would you want to respond what? to that? I, 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 okay, you see, thank God that you, are, you have said that, that you have said that the method of declaring wanted. Can you declare somebody that you have talked to court wanted? You don't and you cannot. EFC no longer have that kind of power because he has been tried to court. Charges have been filed against him. By tomorrow, ruling will be made as to how he will be served, whether by whether by constitutional means or whatever. So the, I, I believe that at to my mind, the moment you charge someone to court, the moment you charge it to court, the person becomes the property of the court. It is now in the honors now, now lies on the court to say, Oh, I want you to, to come before me on so date. And if and if the accused person does refuse you to come, it is the court that will not issue a bench warrant. Look at this scenario. A court of a court a, a court gave another that you should not arrest Larry, 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 you have made those points before. I need to ask you this and question. EFCC Hello, Larry, 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 can you hear me? You have made all those points before. The point I'm trying... The point I want you to... Hello, hello, Larry, hello, Larry, Larry, it, it, Lele, you have yeah. made all those points before, but the point that I need you to address is mm. the point that speaks to the fact that at this juncture, Yaya Bello is acting on the, on the very dangerous principle of self help And in a rule of law, no, respect no. Hello? No, no. Yaya Bello is acting on the principle of rule of law. Because Sir, if, would you, if would you want to listen? Now, it will also be contravening the order of the court. Uh, look, if, the, the order of the court. Larry Alayika. Larry Alayika, the order of the court. Yes. The order of the court is for the agencies of state to enforce. You could, you could have a judgment credit today if the paraphernalia of justice that ought to enforce that judgment credit for you, if they don't go to act in favor of your judgment credit, your judgment credit, if you go out to act on your behalf, you will be committing a crime. Yeah, yeah, let me, know, as let, we let speak. Me, let me call your attention to something. Mm -hmm. Last week, last week, last week on this, last week on the 16th, 
that EFC say, EFC invaded Yabelo's house in Abuja here. Yeah. If they really, we, we see, I, I have maintained consistently that what we are witnessing is the usual drama of the EFCC. Can you say confidently, can you beat your chest to say that they actually wanted to arrange a below that day? Let me give you, let, let, me, let, me, let, let, let me tell you Lely, something. Hello, 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 uh, as preposterous as preposterous as the conduct of UFCC was, and I fully agree with you, as preposterous as it was, I am putting it to you, Lady Olayinka, that the conduct of Yaya Bello in any rule of law respecting society bordered on criminality, resisting arrest by officers of the law. If you do, you, you do not agree with it, that, that, is, that is what I'm saying. Did he actually resist arrest? Was he in the house the day that EFCC went to his house? Was he there? Can EFCC tell us, give us evidence that How did you know all these house? facts? How did you know? How did you know that the intelligence? How so did they arrest him even before? Hello, they, hello, Lele. 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 How did you know that the intelligence yes. that took them to, to the house to arrest him, that intelligence was faulty? And you, an ordinary citizen, you so no. Why, did, why couldn't that intelligence tell them that when he was coming from Lagos? Why couldn't EFC say that the airport in Lagos or in Abuja to arrest him? Okay, let me go to your colleague. Let, let, let me airport. go to your colleague. We, we, I need Abuja to give airport. Dr. Amin. Do not arrest him there. I need to Do give Dr. Amin a fair shot. When he went from there, he was not uh, there. Dr. Amin. And then he tried to be a bad arrest. Dr. Amin. But where is the evidence that he was even in the house that day? I, I just wonder how you got to know that he was not in the house. Uh, Dr. Amit, uh, as a senior journalist and somebody who is at the very, very zenith of the editorial hierarchy of one of the most reputable newspapers in Nigeria, uh, do you have any, any report or field, field, uh, feedback that speaks to the fact that he was not in the he was not in that house that day, and that the SCC probably went there for to 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 go and to go and do what we call in England pantomime to go and do a kind of drama a melodrama. Yeah, you know we rely on the reports that we read from newspapers and radio and television. From those reports, uh, we believe that uh, any report carried by the media is uh, correct, and uh, based on the reports. Uh, uh, he was actually present uh, in that in the house in uh, Zone Four, we say, uh, and efforts to pick him up by the operatives of the EFCC failed. And we also hear that a person of immunity was also there to cover him up and things like that. Uh, we believe that uh, those stories are correct because there is nothing to prove to the contrary. Parting short quickly now. Parting short, uh, Larry. Uh, work, work, work. Let me, uh, let me, let me uh, say this. No, no, uh, no. Before you say, we, we don't have much time. But I need to ask okay. you this. What uh, I'm saying, what uh, I'm no, saying is that, uh, Lele, please, I, I, please, please, please. I don't want just, to believe that party, is blocking the way for prosecution. I don't no, want to believe that. Are you his lawyer? I want to. Are you his lawyer or are you a paid PR consultant to him? Because it, I'm, I'm not. But because are of you a paid PR consultant to him or his lawyer? I know what they did to Fayoshe, so I'm, 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 I'm speaking based on that. Okay, fantastic. Yes, is, fantastic. Yes, is, is but, Lele. Let them wait for the appeal court. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Okay, the Lele, one of that, the one, court. one of that question I need to ask you, one of that, that question I need to ask you before there. you go is that, it was, let's assume that he was not in the house. So, the executive governor of Kogi State, who's motorcade, came to that house that day. The motorcade just came, came to just do a road show in front of Yayabelo's house. It is, it, it is not impossible. Okay, yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Amin, Dr. Amin, your last it one, please. It is Dr. Amin. The governor could have come there to see, to see someone else in the house. Dr. Amin, Dr. Amin, your last one, we are, we are out of time. Dr. Amit, what, what, what Dr. Amit, you are a journalist. Don't let this guy overshadow you. Oh, yes, next. Okay, gentlemen, this is where we leave it for today. We're looking forward to another lovely show with you guys.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the show for tonight. Thank you. <laughs>